Hello and welcome to our lecture. Today we want to discuss two new ideas related to internal rate of return and the payback period, which are uh, methods used for evaluating a project or a certain investment from the financial aspect to see shall we go for the investment or not. Let's begin with the IRR method, the internal rate of return method. Uh, sometimes it's called uh, the investor's method, the discounted cash flow method, or the profitability index. We uh, will calculate the IRR for a certain project. Then, how do we use it for evaluation? We will just compare it to the MAR, the minimum attractive rate of return. If this IRR is greater than or equal to the MAR, then this is a good investment. If the IRR is less than the MAR, this is how I say that this is not a good investment and I will not do this project. Now, how do I calculate the IRR? First of all, we have to know that the IRR is the interest rate at which the revenues are equivalent to the expenses. So if I want to begin calculating the IRR, first I have to set revenues equal to expenses. And if you are getting uh, their equivalence at the present worth, we can say that the present worth of the revenues equal to the present worth of the expenses. Or I can say that the revenues minus expenses equals to zero. Let's see this example to understand better how do we calculate the IRR. Here I'm asking, if I take $5,000 and I invest it for two years, the value after two years in the future became 5926 What was the interest rate that allowed me to uh, increase the original value by this amount. So, as if I'm calculating the interest rate as we used to do previously. The first step in the calculation of the IRR is always, always setting the present worth equals to zero because I want to find the interest rate at which inflows equal to the outflows. So I will get the present value of the inflows and outflows and put it equals to zero to be able to calculate the interest rate. So what do we have? We have an investment of $5,000, so minus $5,000. It is already on the present, so I don't multiply it with any factor. And I have the 5926 which is the future value, far away by two periods or two years. So I will get its present value by saying that P equals F into P knowing F I and here I is unknown and I need to calculate it. So I will set this equation equals to zero to be able to, calcul to calculate the interest rate. So the objective here is calculating the unknown I and when I calculate it, I want to compare it to the MAR. If it's equal to the MAR, then accept the project. Greater than the MAR, this is even better, accept the project. Now remember how many methods did we learn in order to calculate I if it's the missing uh, uh, component. We learned previously that we can calculate it using the equation. So the first solution is by using the equation. I have this equation related to present worth equals to zero. I have set it uh, and the only missing part is the P knowing F I star 2 equals to 5000 over 5926. So I know that the value of the factor is 0 0.8437 from setting P present worth equals to zero. Now, what is the value of this factor in terms of the equations that we know. This is the factor of the P knowing F because I'm calculating P knowing F. So P equals F into P knowing F I N and at the same time equals to 1 plus I to the power minus N. And I know that both of them are equivalent to 0 0.8437. 
So by using this equation, I can tell that I is 8.86%. What if I want to use uh, the table of interest I will go to the table and interest and look at the P knowing F column and I will look at which interest rate is the value close to 0.84. So at 9% I notice that the P knowing F column and N equals to 2 of course uh, the value was 0.8417. When I looked at the table of interest related to 8% at the P knowing F and two years, the value was 0 0.8573. And the value that I'm looking for is 0 0.8437, but I don't know exactly what is I. So I know that it's a number in between the 8% and the 9%. So this is the first step, getting two values from the table of interest. Then I can do interpolation. Using the rule of interpolation, I can tell that I equals to 8.872%. You see, we have practiced doing these methods, but the new part is when I calculate this final value of I, I need to calculate, uh, sorry, I need to compare it to the MAR in order to take a decision regarding this project, whether it's a good investment or not. So we already know how to calculate I, but this is the new part, which is the decision making. Now, both methods gave us an interest rate equals to 8.8%. Now, I want to compare it to the MAR. The MAR was 10%. So, this company will not do this investment unless it gets at least 10%. And here, the IRR is less than the MAR. So, this is not a good investment. Now let's take another example here. We have an investment of $10,000 in a project that will produce uniform annual revenues of 5,310 for five years, and it has a salvage value of 2,000. Annual expenses will be 3,000. The company is willing to accept this project if it earns at least 10%. Determine if it's acceptable by using IRR. So here, I'm not just asking, is this a good investment? Is it acceptable or not? If I only said determine if this is an acceptable project, then you can choose whatever method you want for evaluation. You can just get present worth or future worth, annual worth. And if the value is equals to zero or greater than zero, then this is a good investment. But here, I determined what is the method of evaluation and I specified that only using the IRR, tell me if this is a good investment or not. So here, I want to begin with the method of IRR. What's the starting point? Always, always, I will set present worth equals to zero. And I want to look what are the cash flow, uh, what are the inflows and outflows in my cash flow, so I will set all these values, get them in the present value, then set the present value equals to zero. So here, if you notice, I have an initial investment and I have annuity and I have a future value. With the previous exercises, I only had one factor, only a future value with the present or an annuity with the present. So only factor, one factor. Here I have the P knowing A, I, N factor, and I have the P knowing F, I, N factor. So I have two factors at the same equation. So if I want to use uh, the equation or the table of interest, the calculations will be a little bit complicated. So in this case, uh, it's easier for me to use the method of trial and error, and I will set uh, two different values such that if I take, let's say, for example, here, I want to try to put in the value of I equals to 5%. So I will choose I equals to 5%, and I will calculate the present worth to see its value. Here, when I took I equals 5%, the present worth was the initial investment of the $10,000 plus 
the annuity. What is the annuity here? We have 5,310 as revenues and $3,000 as expenses. So I just say uh, 5,310 minus 3,000 equals to 2,310. And I get the value of the P-knowing AIN when I equals to 5%. Plus, we have a future value of $2,000. So I multiply it with the P-knowing FI and when I equals to 5%. What did I get here is a positive value of the present worth. And this is what I need to get. I need to take an interest rate by trial and error such that the present worth will give me a positive value. Then I will try to choose another value for the interest rate here I choose I equals to 15% such that the present worth will give me a negative value. You choose I that gives you a positive present worth. You choose another value for the I that gives you a negative present worth so that you are sure that the interest rate is between those two values that you chose because I'm looking for the interest rate that makes my present worth equals to zero. I know that this is my IRR. So when I took I equals 15%, I uh, got the present worth in the same equation, just I got uh, the P knowing A for the 15% and the P knowing F for the 15%. So the final answer was minus 1,262. And this is what I need to get. Once the present worth is positive, another time the present worth equals to negative. Now this is a new method for solution, which is the graphical method to calculate the interest rate. Here if you look at the graph, at the x-axis, we have the interest rate chosen. The first time I took it as 5% and the second time it was 15%. If you look at the y-axis, this is the present worth in thousands. So, when I took i equals to 5%, what was the value of the present worth? It was 1,526. So, as if I'm drawing a point here. The x-axis of the first point is 5%. The y-axis is the 1,568. Now, when I took the 15%, the present worth was negative. And I will set this point, this is the x-axis of 15%, the y-axis of minus 1,262. If you join together these points, point A and point C, you will see that it will intersect the x-axis at a point which is a little bit greater than 10%. This point, I will name it as point E, okay? is the point that gives me uh, the present worth equals to zero. This means that it is the point of the IRR, and I need to calculate it. So if I continue the rest of the triangle and draw uh, point B, you will have a triangle ABC. Now we will use uh, the rules of geometry that we know from school in order to get what is the value of IRR exactly? So first point of solution is setting the present worth equals to zero. I know that, okay? Now, I need to get the value of I. Using the graphical method, by looking at the triangle ABC, I will say line BA over line BC equals to line DA over line DE. And I, all, I know the value of all these lines. Let's begin with line BA. Line BA is the distance between the 15% and the 5%. So it is 10%. Now line DA is the value between the I that I don't know and 5%. So it is I minus 5%. Line BC is the distance between the 1,568 
and between the minus 1,262, so 1,568 minus minus 1,262 is the distance of line BC. Line DE is the distance between the 1,568 and zero because point E uh, exists on the line related to present word equals to zero. So knowing all these values together and put it back into the equation of line A, line BA over line BC equals to line DA over line DE, I will solve it, this equation, to get to the value of I, which is unknown to me. You will see that by calculation, direct uh, calculation, I is 10.5%. So this is the graphical method of solving the value of i. Now I got the value of i. The next step is comparing it to the mar, since the mar here is 10%. So 10.5% is greater than 10%. So my IRR that I calculated is greater than the mar. Then this is a good investment. Of course, I will not force you uh, with the method of solution, but we have to learn all the methods available. Sometimes you will see that the cash flow diagram gets more complicated. Here I have a present value, which is the initial investment, $350,000. And I have a future value far away from the present by one period, which is the 1007 And we have an annuity of 214000 So here it's becoming more complicated. The first step is setting the present word equals to zero. Here, what do we have? We have the present word equals to minus $350,000 because it's a downward arrow. It is the investment, it's something paid, and it's already on the present, plus the future value of 1007. So if I want to get its present, I will say P equals F and multiply this $100,007 into the factor of P knowing F I1. And I have this annuity. So if I want to get its present value, P equals A into P knowing A I N. So it will be 214,000 into P knowing A I and four years. And you notice that this is a deferred annuity where it's its present value is at period one, so it's deferred by one period, so I have to multiply it by the P knowing FI one value. So this is the equation for the present word. I will set it to zero. However, calculation by hand, by trial and error, might take some time. So the final method, method for solution is solving using Excel. Uh, I will uh, give you a full session how to use Excel in order to calculate IRR, uh, but we'll uh, keep this to another time. But I just need to tell you that we have still another method for solving the IRR, which is using the Excel when the equation becomes complicated like this form. The last method used for evaluation uh, or assessment of the financial aspect of any project to, this, to decide whether we're going to invest in this project or not is the payback period. However, this uh, method is not used on its own. I have to use it in addition to the previously mentioned methods because it uh, represents or it uh, gets you the number of years required to get back what we have paid in the initial investment. So it's a measure of liquidity, not profitability. We have two methods for calculating the payback. We have the simple payback method and we have the discounted payback method. Using an example, you'll be able to understand what's the difference in between. Let's take this example here. We have a piece of equipment proposed by engineers to increase the productivity of a certain operation. The investment cost is 25,000, market value is 5,000, benefits per year are $8,000. Now the MAR is 20%. I need to calculate the, uh, the payback period 
and the discounted payback periods. It's easier uh, to tabulate the numbers. Here I will begin uh, with the first column, end of year, representing the numbers of year, number of years. At year zero, what do I have? I have the initial investment, $25,000. Then at the next year, I have benefits of $8,000. Next year, same, $8,000. At year three, eight thousand again. At year four, eight thousand. At year five, since uh, this is the last period, and at this period I have the annuity of eight thousand, and I have the market value of five thousand. So the total value will be the eight thousand plus five. It is thirteen thousand. Now, by looking at uh, the third column, I'm getting the cumulative present worth. Okay, this means uh, that I'm doing um, the addition. Let's see how. If I begin at year zero by $25,000 and I'm at the second year getting uh, an income of 8,000, so as if I'm subtracting minus 25,000 plus 8,000, the value is 17,000 minus 17,000 because I want to count how many years will it take me to get back my investment. So if at the second year I got another 8,000, I will say minus 17,000 plus 8,000. This is minus 9,000. Again, at the third year plus 8,000 and I have minus 1,000. At year 4, I'm adding plus 8,000. You will see that I have the value of 7,000. Now, I got a positive value. This means that I took back the 25,000 that I paid, and I got an extra value. But the question is, how many years did it take me to get back my investment? Since I got the first positive value at year 4, so I will say that, the payback period equals to four years. Now, this is the simple payback period. If I want to use the discounted payback period, which is uh, uh, the more accurate because in the simple payback period, I didn't take into consideration the time value of money. However, with the discounted payback period, I need to take the time value of money. This means that at period zero, I have minus $25,000. At year one, I gained $8,000, but I will return this $8,000. Since those are at year one, I will return it to zero. So I want to get its present value. So I will say P equals F, which is the 8,000, into P knowing F, I, which is 20%, and it's far away by one period from the present. So the actual value of the $8,000, if I want to return it back to the present, is 6,667. So now if I want to get the cumulative, I will say minus 25,000 plus 6,667. So if I look at the last column, the value of this cumulative, minus 25 plus 6,667 is minus 18,333. So I will get the discounted value of the second $8,000 at year two, returning it to the present, which is far away by two periods, I will get 5,556. Now this 500, 5,556, I will subtract it from the 18,333. The resultant is minus 12,777. And I will keep going on until I reach a positive value, which is $934. But I got this positive value at year five. So using the discounted uh, payback period, and or the payback fee period is five years. So this is the difference between the simple payback period and the discounted payback period. With the simple payback, I needed four years to return my money back with a discounted, which is the more accurate, 
I took five years to get back my money. So this is a method that I do not use it on its own uh, to determine whether this is a good investment or not. I use it in addition to the previously explained methods. And here you just determine is five years a good uh, value or do I want to get my money with less periods? So you decide. So we usually uh, more than five years uh, is considered um, a, little ba a little bit undesirable. So uh, this was the idea of the payback period and IRR. Thank you for listening.